Shalom to the Mishpacha of Yahweh. Shabbat shalom. shalom. We're glad that you have tuned in to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak television show. We are the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. And we want to uh, start out in uh, Esther, the 8th chapter. We are on uh, part 2 of the lesson, Did Yahweh Command Us to Eat Kosher? Did Yahweh Command Us to Eat Kosher? We're going to start out in Esther, the 8th chapter. So Yahweh said he gave the children of Israel bread to eat. Bread represents physical healing of our bodies and food in general. Did he command us to, quote unquote, eat kosher? We can't answer that question unless we know what, uh, quote unquote, eating kosher is. And uh, sis, I would like you to read from the, uh, according to www.vocabulary.com. Let's let's see what uh, eating kosher is. We have to get it from another source because what we're going to find out is actually not in the scriptures. All Great. right. So read right, according to uh, www.vocabulary.com. What is eating kosher? According to www.vocabulary.com, the word kosher literally means clean or pure. It refers to food that has been ritually prepared or blessed so it can be eaten by religious Jews. Huh. It comes from the Hebrew word kasher, meaning proper or lawful, and became common in English in the mid-19th century. So now here is this uh, vocabulary.com saying that um, eating kosher or kosher it's supposed to literally literally mean clean or pure. Well, we're not looking at a concordance. So we can't just accept that it, it literally means yeah, literally. Clean, clean or pure. But it did say it refers to food that has been that has been ritually prepared. So when you're talking about rituals, you're talking about something that's man-made. Ritually prepared or blessed so that it can be eaten by religious <laughs> Jews. Yeah. It, said right, it started right in the uh, 19th century. I know, right? So two centuries ago. Well, this book was written a yeah. long, long time uh, before right, two right, centuries right. ago. Like this, so we Matter of fact, this is supposed to be almost the end of the, the 6,000th year. All right, so let's read now according to Encyclopedia Britannica because you can't answer what eating kosher is unless you know what people have defined eating kosher as. Okay. So okay. now, so like Encyclopedia Britannica, okay. uh, let's see what it says. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, the English word kosher comes from the Hebrew word kashrut, kesh, Hebrew fitness or kosher state, also spelled uh, oh, can't spell it. Spell it. K a s h r u t or K a s h r u s. Hebrew kashrut in Judaism regulation uh -huh. that that prohibits the eating of certain foods and require the other food to be prepared in a specific specified manner. The term also denotes the state of being kosher according to Jewish law. So now we have <laughs> some more information. And Encyclopedia Britannica may be more neutral than vocabulary.com uh, because vocabulary deals with the words that change over a period of time. All right, so according to Encyclopedia Britannica, it says that this is supposed to be, co eating kosher is supposed to be eating uh, fitness or, or in a kosher state and it says it's uh, something in Judaism. I know, right? So that's some very important uh, information to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These scriptures are not Judaism. That's right, yeah, right, right. So like that. And it says it's regulations that prohibit the eating of certain foods and require that other foods be prepared in a specified uh, manner. Uh. Well, who's specifying the manner? Right. All right, so we want to ask ourselves that question, too. All right. It says, eating kosher, this term also denotes a state of being kosher according to 
Jewish uh, uh, right. law. Uh, and that ish means kind of, sort of, like, right, similar right. to, but, like but not the real got right. McCoy. Yep, yep. So eating kosher is supposed to be based on Bible verses in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. But references for the English word kosher are actually based on verses from the book of Esther. So we're in the book of Esther. We want to go to the 8th chapter. So they say it's supposed to be based on the verses in uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Right. We're going to look at some uh, of the verses because that's where Yahweh gave what's called the dietary law and uh, the meats that uh, are allowed to be eaten and those uh -huh. that are forbidden to be eaten. So like it is, right? so we can know. So, um, references for the English word kosher are actually based on verses from the book of Esther. We want to, want to read Esther, the 8th chapter. This is one of the verses. And verse 5, Hallelujah. Esther, chapter 8, Hallelujah. and verse 5 reads, Esther chapter 8 and verse 5 and said if it please the king and if I have found favor in his sight and the thing seem right before the king I before the king and I be pleasing in his eyes let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamad, Hamad the, the, the Agagite, Agagite which wrote, he wrote to destroy the Hebrews, which are in all the king's provinces. All right. So now it says, and a mark, if it please Hamelech, and if I have found Kabod in his sight, and the thing seem right. Huh. This is what this kosher word is 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 based on. Eating kosher. Huh. If it seem right, right to the king huh. before Hamelech, and if if I be pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, Haban of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy Hayadim, which are in all Hamelech's provinces. So now, uh, Sister Durag, read those two English words, seem right. Uh -huh. So it's saying, if it seems right to the king. Okay. All right. The two English words, seem right, are one primitive Hebrew root word, kasho, spell it for us. Uh, K K A S H E R, okay. kasho. Mm -hmm. uh, found at Strong's Blue Letter Bible or Strong's Exaltive Concordance of the Old and New Testament, it means properly to be straight or right, by implication to be acceptable, also to succeed or prosper, direct, be right, and prosper. All right, so this word is used only three times in the Old Testament. But now it says those English words seem right. And it says means to be straight or right by implication to be acceptable. But now, <clears throat> who's it referring to with seeming right? It's talking about this king. Right. He wasn't even a Hebrew. A person. There you go. It's a man. So even if it was a Hebrew, but right. it wasn't even a Hebrew. He, this is a stranger. <laughs> this is a Caucasian. It would seem right to the king. So they're taking this uh -huh. and and basing this kosher thing on. But so let's look at it. It, it appears this word uh, kasher, K-A-S-H-E-R, only appears three times in the Old Testament. Esther eight and five is one. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. 10 and 10. We're going to look at all of the the words for it seem right. It's uh -huh. not share. Uh -huh. they're, they're basing eating kosher on. Right. Ecclesiastes the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to read Ecclesiastes 10 and 10. Ecclesiastes Hallelujah. Chapter 10 and verse 10. Grace, Maria. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edges, the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. So now this, this word uh, kosher is direct. It says if the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge. So 
we've all used some knives, and if you uh -huh. try to cut something, the knife right, is right. not sharp. Right. So that's it's just what it's saying. Okay, then you be kind of rubbing it right. rather than cutting it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was put more coat, but kokma is profitable to direct. So now what this is telling us is this: eating kosher is something that has been directed. Yep, yep. In a man's mind, saying, "Okay, yep. so this is the proper That's way right. to do something." Yeah, right, right. Tell like this, so All we can right, go. let's go to Ecclesiastes, the eleventh chapter. So this is the the last place that this word is used in the uh, Old Testament in Hebrew. Ecclesiastes eleven, and we want to read verse six. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter eleven. Praise him. Revelation and knowledge. And verse 6 reads, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand, for thou knowest not whether whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. All right, so now in this verse, the word is prosper, that kosher. Okay. It says, in the morning sow thy seed, and in the air or evening, withhold not thine hand, for thou yada not whither shall prosper. Uh -huh. Either this or that, or whether uh -huh. they both shall be alike told. Right, right. So this is talking about how can the scriptures be twisted and added to and taken away so it can bring some monetary benefit right. to the person that's doing the twisting. Right. So it says, okay, well, uh, try it this way, try it that way. Right. So then by the mid-19th century, it got to a certain point to where, okay, this is where <laughs> the most money can be made. Y'all right, from right, this. Like it is. All right, so uh, Derek, let's read according to www.bachelon.com. What do they say eating kosher is or what is kosher? Huh. According to www.balashan.com, the word kosher clearly comes from the Hebrew kasher. Spell it. K-A-S-H-E-R. So word. now we saw that. Uh -huh. so that's true. We went to the concordance. We saw that. <laughs> All right. Now, here we go. The pronunciation and spelling kosher is from the Ashkenazi and Yiddish influence. Uh -huh. But the Hebrew kasher and its associated words have many more meanings. The root only appears a few times in the Tanakh, mostly in the later books. So now we have even more clues to add to what is this talking about? Kosher, eating kosher. It says uh, kosher comes from the Hebrew Kosher, we just uh -huh. saw that. Yeah, the word. It said, but the pronunciation and spelling kosher, K-O-S-H-E-R, is from the Ashkenazic. I know, right? And Yiddish influence. Huh. He's so, both. so now then, huh. you gotta, <laughs> you might not know what that is. Uh -huh. So now you gotta see what was he talking about? This Ashkenazic. Uh -huh. What's he talking about? Yiddish. You're right. It says, and then it throws out something else. Here's something that talks about, it appears a few times in the Tanakh. Huh. Well, we have a Tanakh back here. And that's a book that um, you can look at and, and see where it comes from. But it also gives you another clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the word kosher is from Ashkenazic, that's A-S-H-K-E-N-A-Z-I-C, -A K-E-N-A-Z-I-C influence. So now, according to, let's let's see what is Ashkenazic. Okay? Okay. Faith. According to www.cancer.gov, Ashkenazic is one of two major ancestral groups of Jewish individuals comprised of those whose ancestors lived in Central and Eastern Europe. Example, Germany, Poland, Russia. The other group is designated Sephardic Jews and includes those whose ancestors live in North Africa, the Middle East, and Spain. Most Jews living in the United States 
are of Ashkenazi descent. Okay, so uh, now we have even more uh, uh, evidence, even more research yeah. to, to kind of look and see what what is this talking about. Right, right. It says uh, it's uh, ancestral groups of Jewish individuals, and they lived in Central and Eastern Europe, Germany, Poland, and Russia. Uh huh. And then they said, well, there's another group. They're called Sephardic. And they lived in North Africa, Middle East, and Spain. But most Jews living in the U.S. of A are the Ashkenazic. Mm. So if you see something about eating kosher yeah. in the U.S.A., then you're dealing with the Ashkenaz Ashkenazic Jewish people. Uh -huh. Tell that again, bro, so we can know. All right, so the word kosher is also, it says, from Yiddish influence. Right. That's Y-I-D-D-I-S-H. So what, what is Yiddish? Uh -huh. All right, let's see oh, what that deep, is. Bro. According to dictionary.com, Yiddish is a language used by Jewish people in Central and Eastern Europe before the Holocaust. It was originally a German dialect with words from Hebrew and several modern languages and is today spoken mainly in the U.S., Israel, and Russia. Well, so now the Yiddish just refers to the language of the people that are talking about eating kosher right, right. and what kosher is. All right, bro. I'm it's a language out. used by Jewish people in Central and Eastern Europe before the Holocaust. I know, right? So when you mention Holocaust, huh. that's a bullseye. You immediately right. should understand what it's talking about. So the question is, did y'all recommend us to eat kosher? The answer is no. N O. Huh. There you go. No. So what what is eating kosher really? Go to Genesis the 27th chapter. What is eating kosher really? And that's why we have to be so careful yes. or so aware, yeah. not full of care about right. it, but we aware. have to, to, to be so aware food. that we can't just randomly throw words around and think when you hear somebody else using a word that they're talking about what you're talking about. Right. Or right. you can't right. assume you know what they're talking about. That's right. Because if somebody asks you, do you eat kosher? Huh. From this lesson, you should understand now, if you're following what Yahweh told you to eat, you should tell them no. All right. And as we go into the lesson, you're going to see that you do not eat kosher. So, eating kosher. What is eating kosher really? We're in Genesis 27. Eating kosher is a tool of economic prosperity okay. made up by a certain people. It is these people who are uh -huh. trying to pass, quote unquote, eating kosher off as a command from Yahweh. Uh -huh. Genesis 27. And if you don't investigate, uh -huh. then you'll be eating some stuff that Yahweh told you uh -huh. not to right. eat. Tell and then again, you'll right. be thinking it's all right. Yeah. Then you'll be thinking if you prepared it with the right knife and the right fork, uh -huh. and if you kept the cheese away from it, uh -huh. or if you had somebody pray over it, uh -huh. like in the New Testament where people think they can pray over something right. and eat yeah, it, right, right. that's just it. another version of it. But so then you'll be thinking that you're eating like Yahweh told you to eat. But eating kosher is a tool of economic prosperity made up by people. Uh -huh. who are trying to pass off eating kosher as a command from Yahweh. Genesis 27, we're going to read verses 38 to 40. Hallelujah. Genesis 27, we're just going back to the original before That's right. there was such a thing as eating kosher. Uh -huh. Well, it didn't really form and formulate and, and didn't really come to a head until the 19th century, right, right. a couple of centuries ago. So they, had, they were tweaking it from yeah. 70 AD up until that point. Yeah. Genesis chapter 27, let's read verses 38 to 40, please. Uh, yeah. Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. 
Verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40. And by thy sword thou sh uh, shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. All right, so now we're, we're back at the beginning of Jewish people. It says, And I saw Amar to his Abba, Hast thou but one Barakah, my Abba? Barak me, even me also, O my Abba. And I saw lifted up his voice and wept. And Yitzchak, his Abba, Amar and Amar to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of Ha'eret. Here's this economic prosperity yeah, blessing yeah, yeah, yeah. that was given to the progenitor of Jewish people by this Shemite, one of the patriarchs, Isaac. He said, your dwelling shall be the fatness of high air and of, dew of, and of the dew of Shemayim from above. And by thy sword thou shalt kaya, and shalt ever thy ark. The brother was Jacob, uh -huh. our progenitor. Yeah, 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 right, and it right, shall right, come right. to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break Jacob's neck yoke from off thy neck. Yeah. So we want to see what this blessing is. So what happened was, I saw sold his birthright to Jacob for the, the bowl of soup. And then he tried to get it, but Yahweh had uh, 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 Jacob come in. And he got the blessing. Well, he already had it because I saw gave it to him. Right. So now I saw was trying to get some kind of blessing. Yeah, yeah. And so what uh, his father did was pronounce upon him economic blessing, the earth economic blessing. He said yeah. that you will be able to get a lot of money in the earth. All right. He gave him that natural economic blessing. So let's look at these four English words because it says, by the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven will his descendants live. Will, will Esau and his descendants live? Uh -huh. All right, that's economic prosperity, but let's, let's look at it in the original language and see what it's talking about, okay? The four English words shall be the fatness are one Hebrew word, mashman, mashman, Found at Strong Blue Letter Bible number 4924, Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew and English Lexicon defines them as fat, fertile, place for eating or drinking, fat, peace, and tidbit. All right, so, so now it's saying he, he would have a fertile place in the earth. A, a fat place for eating and drinking. In other words, talking about prosperity. Uh -huh. All right. Let's read. What's the dew of heaven? What that? Because that's the blessing that that his his father gave him after he gave up his first birthright blessing. Okay. The four English words, the of the dew, are one Hebrew word top, found at Strong's Blue Letter Bible number two nine one nine. Strong's define them as coming from the sky and bringing fertility. All right, so so what Yitzchak uh -huh. did to uh, Isav and to his descendants, the Jewish people, was he opened the, the, the heaven and he asked Yahweh yeah. to bless yeah. them uh -huh. with earthly monetary yeah. blessing. Yeah. Yep. All right, it says, Strong defines the dew of heaven as coming from the sky and bringing fertility. Uh -huh. Well, Yahweh is the one that blesses yeah. from heaven. All right, so this is what the father gave to Esau and his descendants. Go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Thanks. The mighty office, Revelation knowledge. Deuteronomy 32. Right. Let's read verses 1 to 2, please. Uh, Chapter 32 and verses 1 to 2 reads, 
Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So what, what Yahweh is saying, uh, he's, he's letting you know when we say Yahweh's words, we can bless people. So this is what Yitzchak did to uh, uh, Esau. He says, give ear, O ye Shemayim, and I will amar. And Shemar o Eret, Hadavarim of my mouth. So Yitzchak just said the words from Yahweh's mouth. Yeah, yeah. And he blessed Isab, who is the progenitor of the Jewish people with economic prosperity. Yahweh said, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. Yes. My speech shall distill as the dew. So when we say the words of Yahweh, oh, yeah. then Yahweh watches over his word to perform yes. it. As a small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. So let's go to Romans the ninth chapter. So Isaac, a child of Israel, Esau's father, called earthly prosperity uh, upon Esau and his descendants. Yep, yep. Romans the ninth chapter. So even though Esau had to suffer the consequences of selling his birthright, uh -huh. Yahweh honored Isaac's words yes. and gave Esau and his descendants earthly prosperity. Yep, yep. Romans the ninth chapter. So he had to suffer the consequences of selling his birthright. But Yahweh honored Yitzchak or Isaac's words yes. and gave Esau and his descendants earthly prosperity. Romans the ninth chapter, let's read verses 10 to 13. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 9 and verses 10 to 13. Reads. Romans chapter 9, verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Verse 11, for the children being not yet born, and neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Elohim according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. Uh -huh. Mr. Mighty out for his uh -huh. word. So here we're reading about the same account over in the uh, Kadash Barit, the New mm -hmm. Testament. It says, not only this, but when Ripka also had conceived by Akkad, even by our Abba Yitzchak, for Haban being not yet born, neither having done any tob or ra, that the purpose of Elohim, according to election, might stand. So Yahweh had a holy, holy lineage that his son Yahshua was going to come through, a holy uh, natural man lineage, uh -huh. Shemite lineage. And it says, according to your election, I stand not of works, but of him that corrupt. So he said, before the children were even born, before Esau sold his birthright to Yaakov, Yahweh had already said the elder was going to serve the younger. They were twins, but Esau, Esau came out first. Uh -huh. So Yahweh already said Yaakov, uh, Esau was going to serve Yaakov. All right, but, but then it went to some convolutions because Yahweh knew that Yaakov people were going to huh. rebel and, right. and so things got turned upside down. Right, but that right. was already, even before Esau sold his birthright, right, right. Yahweh yeah, right, had already right. said that Yaakov was going to be on top. All right, verse 12. Verse 12, and it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the young. See, so here Yahweh is telling you what he told her and you can read it over in Bereshit Genesis uh, at your own time, but it was a mar unto her by Yahweh. The uh -huh. elder shall ebbed the younger. I saw came out first, and Yaakov came out second. Yeah, so yeah. Yahweh called it. Yeah. Before they even came out of the womb. All right, verse 13. Verse 13, as it is written, Yaakov have I loved, but Esau have I hated. He says, so as it is written, Yaakov have, have I a have, but I saw have I sane. And now, he didn't like what Isaac did, devaluing right, right. His, his birthright and the right. way he did it. And see, Yahweh didn't make him do it. Right. He just knew he was going to do that. So, Yahweh doesn't have respect for people that don't stand up and, and respect what he respects. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 19, chapter. Praise. And he said, hey, and it's as it is written. So, it's written in another spot. Yaakov, have I a have? 
But I saw him, have I hated him. Uh -huh. So nay. Praise. And, 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 and it, it's specifically talking about I saw, but it's also talking about some descendants and some things that they uh, got into and did. Proverbs 19 chapter. Yeah, yeah. And we want to read verse 12. Proverbs 19 chapter. Oh, yeah. And for people to say Yahweh is love, he is love. And he loved people so much, he's going to um, let, let them, he is letting them make a choice about right. whether or not they uh, respect what he respects. All right, all right. Tell like this so we can know. Uh, Proverbs 19, and let's read verse 12. Oh, yeah. Proverbs chapter 19. In verse 12, read. Oh, Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 19 and 12. The king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. Yes. All right, so we're still dealing with this dew. They got this uh -huh. uh, um, song in the Sunday church with his showers of blessings coming down, but it says, how Melech's wrath is as a roaring of a lion. So, so Yahweh got that wrath, but he's also got that, that love side. He's also got that blessing right, side. Right. It says, How Melech's wrath is as a roaring of a lion. Well, you just read over in Romans 9 and 13, and it is written, Yaakov have I loved, but I saw have I hated. That's that wrath part. It says, The king's wrath is as a roaring of a lion, but. His kabod, his favor is as dew upon the grass. Yes. So he still blessed uh, Esau. He still blessed Esau's people because a righteous man stood up and asked him to bless his Hallelujah. son that way. Hallelujah. All right, go to Proverbs 10th chapter. So the earthly prosperity that Esau received, it was legal. Uh -huh. And it was to stay legal. But legal earthly prosperity is a blessing to people. It's not a curse to people. Legal earthly prosperity yes. is a blessing to people. It's supposed to help them. Proverbs 10, chapter, let's read verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. Read. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The blessing of Yahweh is make it make it rich. And he added no sorrow with yes. him. Alright, so we're talking about that dude from Shemaiah, yes. that, that blessing yes. that, that uh, Yitzchak, Isaac, uh, called and asked for for his son Esau. And Esau got it. And his descendants got it. But it says, how Barakab Yahweh, it maketh rich. So yeah, they're supposed to be rich. They're supposed to have economic prosperity. But it says, when Yahweh blesses people, he has no sorrow That's right. with it. Th there's nothing negative about it, but that, let's, let's, uh, we're going to look at that word um, in the Hebrew. But Isaac gave Esau an earthly prosperity blessing. His descendants added sorrow to it uh -huh. by making it illegal uh -huh. or out of line with what Yahweh commanded. See, that they would still have gotten rich uh -huh. if they hadn't gotten out of line. But in their own mind, they thought they had to twist and turn and then right. they could get more money. Just, right, like, right. just like men think when they think wrong. So let's look at these uh, two English words where it says, Yahweh, his blessing makes you rich. His dew from heaven makes you rich, but there's no sorrow. He doesn't add sorrow. Right, right. right. All right, so what does that mean, there's no sorrow? The two English words, no sorrow, are one Hebrew word, estet, found at Strong's Blue Letter Bible, number 6089, Brown, Driver, Brig, Hebrew and English lexicon defines them as pain, hurt of mind, a word that hurts and is opposed to, uh, a vessel fashioned and despised, Jacinius Hebrew, Chaldee, Lexicon defines no sorrow as grief of mind and anger. All right, so when right. Yahweh blesses, he's, right. he's saying that this no sorrow, it means there's no pain to it. No. There's no hurt of the mind to it. No. It's not a word that, that hurts and is opposed to what Yahweh has said to do. There's no anger in it. 
Let's go back to Genesis, and let's go to Genesis 27. So, so why is it their grief about, about this, this blessing now, the economic prosperity blessing that was put on uh, Esau's people? Why, why is that? Genesis 27. Hallelujah. We're going to see it's because they took what he did selling his birthright, and then they, they got a grudge going. And and uh, then uh, along with the the, the natural uh, minded, they think they, they they got to twist the blessing. It's kind of like when um, Yahweh uh, the twelve tribes split up into ten tribes and two tribes, and Yahweh told uh, Jeroboam he was going to head the ten tribes. Uh -huh. Then Jeroboam, in his natural mind, thinking, well, you know what? They've been used to going to Jerusalem, to the temple when the holy days come. So I got to protect my interests. <laughs> now, whatever Yahweh gives you, you don't have to be twisting and, and, and trying to make something work out. Right. If Yahweh gave it to you, nobody can take it from you. Right, right. Now, you can give it up by disrespecting Yahweh okay, and, right, and right, disrespecting right. how he, he does things or, or making making. Him think you don't trust him to protect what right. he's given to you. Hallelujah. You're not understanding who gave it to you. Hallelujah. Nobody can take it away from you. Hallelujah. But you can mess it up yourself That's it. by not respecting Yahweh and not leaning on Tell Yahweh. Like it, this bro. man Jeroboam, so we can know. he decided he made up some fake I feast know, right? days and he, he uh, built another temple. He did all kind of, he, he made some... some uh, um, fake priests out uh -huh. of the wrong tribe. I mean, he just messed up all kind of stuff. So this is similar to the, to the same type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Where he calls himself protecting this interest. Well, uh -huh. we already gave it to you. That's right. Why are you going to step in there like you can do something uh, better than Yahweh? You can I protect know, right? yourself better than Yahweh. All right, but this, this grief of mine, why is there a grief of mine attached now? To the descendants of Esau, that earthly prosperity blessing they got. Genesis chapter 27, let's read verse 41. Hallelujah. Where, where did that pain and hurt come in at? Uh -huh. The sorrow. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 41. And Esau hated Yaakov uh -huh. because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother, Yaakov. All right, so so I saw was trying to act like he hadn't sold his birthright. Uh -huh. And uh, so when it first went down, even though his, his father gave him that earthly prosperity blessing, he still wanted the blessing that he gave away. Uh -huh. But and then it said, and I saw Sanei Yaakov because of how Barakah, wherewith his eyeball Barak him, and I saw Amar and his lady, Hayama, mourning for my Abba, our hand. Then will I slay my Ak Yaakov. So he said, I'm going to kill Yaakov right, right. after my father dies. Right. So Esau's descendants abused his earthly prosperity blessing by making up their own rules uh -huh. about eating, calling it kosher. Right, right. Yeah, right, right. And right it here. stemmed out of that anger. Just yeah. like we see I saw was, was angry here and said, I'm going to kill Yaakov. But it was his own fault. Right. But what happened in his life, he resolved it and he worked it out. Yes, he did. But his descendants didn't. They kept that anger and that hurt. And so what this, this eating kosher, these own rules that came out of that, it added sorrow right, right. to what Yahweh said about eating. Go to Proverbs 28 chapter. So they abused it, that earthly prosperity uh -huh. blessing. And because they made up their own rules right, right. about eating, and they claim it's based on the Bible huh. and what Yahweh said. Huh, no. But actually, when you investigate, which Yahweh has given all of us a mind and a, a will and a way to investigate, you find out that it is actually hurtful, painful, but it stems out of the anger that Esau had at first. And even though Esau resolved it in his own lifetime, right, his right. descendants didn't. Right. And as Got the centuries right, right. went on, and then especially after the Romans uh, 
kick the last of right. us, our forefathers, oh, yeah. out of the land in 70 AD. Yeah. Then they just let that anger just, you know, bloom up, just like uh, uh, the Shemite Jeroboam did. They figured, oh, okay, we got it now. Right. So then they started twisting and turning and, and trying to, to, to make it to where it is like the, the tighter you try to hold on to something, the more it's going to get away from you. Hallelujah. So the, the worst thing you can do if you really want something, you just really like to just try to hold on to it too tight because just as sure as you holding on to it so tight, it's, it's <laughs> yep. going to leave you. Yep. But they did just like Jeroboam. Mm. And they started twisting and making up all these rules and everything. And um, it just stemmed out of that anger. Yep, yep. And Esau said, I'm going to kill Yaakov. <laughs> but he, he worked it out. Yep. All right? But they didn't. Uh, Proverbs 28, let's read verses 8 to 10. So Hallelujah. He saw descendants abuse his earthly prosperity, uh -huh. blessing. Now they're making up their own rules. Uh -huh. One of them they made up is about eating kosher. Proverbs 28, verses 8 to 10. And it reads. Proverbs 28, uh, verse uh, 8. And that by usury and unjust gain yep. increaseth his substance. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Mm -hmm. So here we're looking at, that's what happened. That by usury. And unjust gain yeah, yeah. increases his substance. Yeah. Now, y'all already, already gave him the, the prosperity blessing. I know, right? So, the, it wasn't necessary to do all this twisting and turning and, and, and making up all this, this, this stuff. By usury and unjust gain, he increases his substance. That's adding that sorrow to right, Yahweh's right. blessing. Yeah, yeah. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. So whoever will believe the lie, then they just gonna gonna sell the lie. All right. What is it kind of like the the con man with the the bag of uh, um you you give him he's supposed to be giving you a bag of money, mm -hmm. but then it's really a bag of paper. They want you to go to the bank, and so they they giving you a a a, a bag of doctrine, All right? And telling you it's based on the word. Mm -hmm. But it's going to cause you pain and sorrow because yeah, right, right. you're that coming up against go. Yahweh if yeah. you follow what they're saying. Right. Okay. And so they're just trying to make some more money. They already got the prosperity blessing. They're yeah. just trying to make some more money. All right. Verse nine. Verse but nine. But they're doing it illegally. That's it. Mm -hmm. Verse nine. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Uh -huh. Verse 10, whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things and possessions. Yes. So, he that turneth away his, his ear from Shemar HaTorah. Right. Yahweh is the lawgiver. Yeah, I see. There's no man that can stand up legally and talk about he's passing some laws about what you're supposed to eat or how you're supposed to dress. Or, right. They can stand up and say it, but it's illegal. Right, right. He that turned away his ear from his, from Shemar HaTorah, even his halal shall be an abomination. Uh -huh. Yahweh's not hearing their prayer. That's why you read that scripture. Hey, Yaakov, I've loved, but I saw have I hated. And this is a representation representation of nations. So when you're reading about Isaac and Yaakov, right, right. he's talking about a people, not just the individual person. Right. Yeah, right, right. Who so right. causes Hasidic to go astray right. in a raw way? Right. Somebody come up asking you, are you eating kosher? If you haven't investigated it, then you we're gonna find out. You're gonna be eating some stuff that Yahweh yeah. said is is uh, filth. That's right. It's not supposed to be eaten. You're going to be believing some stuff. You're going to be wearing some stuff. Yeah. That's filth. That Yahweh did not say. Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way. Being so sneaky about it. Right. He shall fall himself into his own pit. The song says, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. Yeah, yeah. Because the trap is set for me, it may be for you. Yeah, yeah. Said, but... Hatamim shall have told things in possession. The upright, the ones that are not turning away from the law. Right, right. Go to Romans, the seventh chapter. So Esau's descendants claim they are 
Jacob's descendants. I know, right? Romans, the seventh chapter. And that's one of the things that they're using to push this, this, this sorrowful doctrine off on people most of all. Yeah. Claiming that they are Jacob's descendants. Yeah. All right, Ron, tell like it is for weak to know. To try to make the lies more believable. Yeah. Romans the seventh chapter, we want to read verse 11. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 7, Hallelujah. verse 11. So each eating kosher came out of Esau's descendants, twisting Yahweh's earthly prosperity blessing tell like it is, to bro. make more money. That's it. That's it. Eating kosher came out of Esau's descendants, twisting Yahweh's earthly prosperity blessing to make more money. Romans 7 and verse 11. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 11. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Uh -huh. Alright so now uh, the commandment which Yahweh honored, the, the blessing came upon Esau and his descendants. It said but Hatah taking occasion by HaMitzvah <clears throat> by the blessing that was pronounced, can deceive people and kill people. Yeah. Because they're eating this stuff. See, so Yahweh's, the dietary laws are for our health. Yeah. I mean, robust health. Yeah. And he told us not to eat some stuff because it'll kill you. Yeah. Because it's one of the worst things that you can eat. So, th so this is what it is talking about. Yeah. yeah. Taking occasion by the commandment, and then standing up and proclaiming that you're this or you're that. Right. And then most people, sad to say, just innocently and innocently and blindly trust. Yeah. Try that because, again, right? because they tell themselves, well, you know, nobody would just do that. Nobody would would just do that. You know, deliberately on purpose. <laughs> yes, they would. Yeah. Yes, they would. And one thing about money. People, it's a lot of people that are greedy. You give them enough money, <laughs> and they'll turn their back on their own father, yep. mother, sister, Tell brother. Like it, is, Rob. it said, but, but sin, taking occasion by the commandment, right. twisting the commandment. That's it. Tell it like it is. Teach it, Rob. That's why you, 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 Yahweh uh, cautions us. Don't just be so trusting people. Right. Don't just be so so gullible and just so if somebody tells you something or somebody. Um, says something to you or somebody acts a certain way. Right. Yeah, right, right. Don't just open up the floodgates of trust and you, you know, you, you know them two weeks and then, right. you just, oh, you just, remember years ago, somebody, um, daughter of somebody, and he this dude known him about three weeks and talking about this is my fiance. <laughs> hmm. So I wasn't that close to him, but, you know, me and my family just like, hey, you don't have a fiance and you, I don't know. Well, now, if you're part of those people over there that believe in what is arranged marriage, uh -huh. but uh, there's no such thing. Um, so, Esau's descendants, this, this verse in Romans says that they kill those who think eating kosher is right. from Yahweh. See, because other than that, they wouldn't do it. Right. The people wouldn't do it. But right. because they're standing up and claiming they're this or that, right? Then some people are gullible and they just trust it and they just mm -hmm. follow it along. Yep. What is it like a lamb to the slaughter? Yep. All right. So, Derek, uh let's read uh, from uh, Kabad.org. So now this is part of eating kosher. So let, let, let's see what they say is part of eating kosher. Yeah, according to www.kabad.org, duck is a kosher bird, provided uh. that the duck has been slaughtered by a qualified <laughs> sh shock, it. shock it and properly salted. Mm. Duck meat is a perfectly kosher food. Mm. Like all other meat, it would need to be cooked with kosher utensils and kept separate wow. from milk or dairy products. So this is, again, wow. their people have the economic prosperity blessing. Yeah. Now they've abused it. Yeah. And twisted it. Now they're coming against Yahweh. Yeah. With with that machine gun. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 this is what this is. Da, 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 da. And we're gonna look at the scripture. So we're just not 
Pouncing on. No, we, we're no. telling the truth. Y'all just say it. stand up and tell the That's truth. That's it. That's it. So here's Kabai telling you, hey, duck is a kosher bird. Right. But now, see, this one make it kosher. Right. It's got to be slaughtered by a qualified whatever this is, shocking person. No, right. It got to have the right amount of salt. <laughs> they say it's a perfectly kosher food. Well, right. it is, because eating kosher is a lie. Huh. Eating kosher right. is whatever they make it up to be. Mm -hmm. It says, but now, also it got to be cooked with kosher utensils. <laughs> I know, right? So, you know, if you got a kosher pen, but you know, kosher whatever it is, a fork or whatever, huh. kosher spatula, huh. kosher knife, <laughs> and it got to be kept separate from milk or dairy products. Mm. So eating kosher says we can eat duck. Let's go see what the Venice huh. 11 says. Right. What Yahweh our Elohim says. Right. The maker and creator of the universe. Hallelujah. The one that dictated the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. Leviticus 11. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 11, we want to read verses 13 to 19. Right. So right. Kosher says we can eat duck. They, they says, he said, perfectly right, right. kosher food. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 13 to right. 19. Right. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 13. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey. Verse 14. And the vulture and the kite after his kind. Mm. Verse 15. Every raven after his kind. Verse 16, and the owl and the night hawk and the and the cookout and the hawk after his kind. Verse 17, and the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl. Verse 18, and the swan and the pelican and the gear eagle. Praise about it, y'all for his word. So now they went from the fowls that fly. Now they went from to fowls that they got a little water thing going on. So they may fly a little or they may, you know, swim in the water with those webbed feet. So you're talking about the swan, the pelican, right. yeah. and the gear eagle, verse 19. Verse 19, the stork and uh, <laughs> the heron after her kind and the lapwing and the bat. So the duck is included mm -hmm. among these animals right here. All right. Go to Ezekiel, the 44th chapter. So, so now, who are you going to listen to? Hmm. Yahweh. Oh, I man. know I am. Ezekiel 44. Praise the mighty Yahweh's revelation. Not it. Yeah, verse 23. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 23. Read. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, uh -huh. and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Yeah. All right? So Yahweh wants us to be able to discern or to know yeah. when we're being lied to. Uh -huh. And they shall Yeramai am the difference between Hakadash and profane, and cause them to discern between the clean and the unclean and the clean. Yeah, yeah. So eating kosher says we can eat liver. Huh. Let's see what um, www.kaad.org huh. says about eating liver. According to www.kaad.org, due to liver's high blood content, salt is not sufficient to draw out the blood. Therefore, liver can be kosher only by a special broiling process. Huh. The liver should be broiled within the first 72 hours. Okay, so now huh. they say, okay, to put the liver, you, you can yeah. do something a little extra right. because it's got high blood content in it. Huh. Now we're going to find out with the liver, it don't matter what you do with it right. extra. It's still, Yahweh did not say eat it was clean to eat. All right. He said, okay, the, the salt not going to draw the blood out. Uh -huh. So the, the, the liver's got to be uh, koshered 
by a special broiling process. Uh -huh. The liver should be broiled within the first 72 hours. Mm -hmm. So read the rest of what it says kosher vendors say about liver. Okay, kosher vendors say scald veal liver with hot water. Cook other meats at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius until soft. Save stock. Be sure all meats are cold. Grind all meat through two millimeters or quarter inch plate. <laughs> Refreeze and grind again. Uh, kosher sausage made of chicken meat and liver, soy protein isolate, oil and water combines well in food processor, creating mayonnaise type emulsion. So, so see all these details right. that they're giving. That's just a better the, the twisting of the deception right, right, right. and the sin and the sorrow that right. they have put in here. Go to Leviticus at ninth chapter. So they say we can huh. eat liver. Right. Matter of fact, um, before me and Micaiah knew, we were up the street at this place and buying some uh, liver sausage, making sandwiches after <laughs> yeah. we come to Yahweh. And then we found out. And that's how Yahweh quickened us to start to know. Oh, there you are. Okay, wait a minute now. What is this? You're talking about kosher and they got all this unclean stuff <laughs> over here. Leviticus, the ninth chapter. But if you don't know. Right. And verse 10. Leviticus oh, chapter 9. And let's read verse 10, please. Praise him. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 10. But the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver of the sin offering, he burnt upon the altar, as Yahweh commanded Moshe. All right, so this looks like, this reminds me of um, when they went to, um, was it Jericho, and then Achan took that stuff, and uh, whatever place they went in, Yahweh said before they went in, look, don't take this, because right, right. that's mine. Right. You, you take it, but you're gonna give it to me. And then the man took the stuff, and uh, ended up getting him and his family killed. Right, right. He said, the fat and the kidneys and the call above the liver of the Hata offering, he burnt upon the altar as Yahweh Sabah Moshe. So this English word call is the flap of the liver. It's the greater lobe or the outhanging of the liver. Okay. Or Exodus, the ninth chapter. So Yahweh said, that's mine. Right. Even though we're not offering uh, offerings anymore.